Hi, I'm Cal Ewing, and thanks for taking the time to check out this short video where I'm just going to explain a little bit about what I do in real estate investing. Uh, I've been an active real estate investor since 2009, and uh, I own a company called 49th Parallel Properties Limited. And so this video is just going to explain a little bit about how we are buying non-performing mortgage notes, which are secured to single family homes all across the U.S. And we're able to buy these deals at literally pennies on the dollar. Uh, we can buy a mortgage note backed by a single family home for anywhere between 40 and 60 percent of what the, the mortgage loan is worth. And then uh, we've got a variety of strategies that we do both for cash flow and then also uh, taking back properties and then selling them again for profit. So uh, I'm going to get into that right now for you. So first off, a little bit about me. My name is Cal Ewing. And uh, first and foremost, I'm a husband and father. I've got two beautiful daughters, Maya, who is 15 at the time of recording, and Sorsha, who is seven. And my wife, Laura, is not pictured here. I grew up and still live in Alberta, Canada. And uh, I'm a rancher's son. My father was a rancher, as was my grandfather. So I grew up on a ranch. Uh, hard work and entrepreneurship were um, values that I learned very early and realized that I wanted to maintain in my adult life. Uh, here's just a, a photo, a common photo of what I would have seen when I was a kid. Uh, we raised cattle on the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. After graduating, I moved to the city of Calgary, which is the next closest city to where I lived. And uh, I took a degree in geology and earth science at U of C. And while I was there, even though I loved studying geology, I got really into real estate investing at that time after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And so I actually bought my first real estate deal in the Las Vegas, Nevada, while I was getting my undergrad degree. After graduating, I worked as a geologist in oil and gas and uranium exploration. I also, in the meantime, worked as an underwriter for a private mortgage lender here in, in Canada. And I learned a great deal about the mortgage industry, uh, being a lender, what it entails, what lenders look for, how they bet borrowers. And it was incredibly valuable for what I'm doing now. Um, even though it was a Canadian lending company, um, there's a lot of parallels between both the US and Canada when it comes to mortgages and lending. And as I said, I've been investing in US real estate since I was in university, which was around 2009. Uh, like I said, started in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, I did my second deal in Phoenix, Arizona, and then most of my focus was in, in Texas after that. And my company is 49 Parallel Properties Limited. I'm going to uh, describe a little bit more about what we do in the next slide. And also what I've been doing, especially since COVID, is uh, real estate investing, coaching, and mentoring. So I've had some one-on-one -on -one students that I've coached in primarily investing in U.S. real estate as a Canadian. And then I had the opportunity to teach a 14 week wholesale real estate wholesale training program all on Zoom um, during the COVID lockdowns. And uh, we got to teach in front of about 80 to 100 students. And that was fantastic. So a little bit more about 49th Parallel Properties, my company. We are based in Texas. We're registered in Texas and uh, we are a real estate investment and mortgage note investment company. It started in 2016. And since then, we've completed over 100 U.S. real estate and uh, mortgage note transactions. And in the last, I guess, three to five years, we've done over 3.5 million in, in deals. Like I mentioned, we also have the foreclosure excess proceeds uh, arm to our business, which is pretty much fully operational. I have a team that runs that, which has freed me up to do uh, a lot more in the, the note buying side of the business in the last few years. And so our focus is on buying and selling non-performing notes, which we call NPNs. And I'm going to explain the majority of this presentation on how we do that. So here's just a little animation, some of the past deals we've done and a combination of, of real estate purchases. So properties that we've bought and sold, as well as notes that we've done. And I'm not going to go into all these. I just want to give you a little bit of a picture of, of what we've done in the past. So my company's focus is to buy distressed debt from banks at big discounts, okay? So we're buying mortgages or, or mortgage notes is what they're called. And the word distress infers that the borrower has stopped paying for at least 90 days. So it's called a non-performing note. So the borrower is currently not paying 
And banks don't like that, obviously. Um, they're in the business of collecting loan payments and, and earning interest. So these banks are often willing to sell these notes to the public for pennies on the dollar. So we're able to buy non-performing mortgage notes for anywhere from 40 to 60 cents on the dollar, which is fantastic. And so when we do that, when we buy a, a note from the bank, we now become the bank. And uh, so we can reach out to the borrower and uh, basically solve the problem, figure out why they're not paying, and then uh, come to some sort of solution. And so what we do, we actually prefer underwater assets, which most real estate investors, they're looking for equity. Uh, but what we find is we can actually make more money um, from underwater assets and those that are owner occupied. So we're looking for mainly notes that are on single family homes, um, also condos, uh, duplexes, triplexes, that kind of thing, but mainly single family residential. Owner occupied is what we prefer. And then uh, other low equity or underwater assets. And the price range that we're looking at is between 50,000 and 250,000 as the value, the current value of that asset. And we're looking in all the major primary and secondary markets across the US. Uh, mainly, this is cities with a population of at least 100,000. And there are a few exceptions that we, we don't look in, and I'll explain that a little later. So these are in states, uh, a lot in the Midwest, in the eastern part of the U.S., um, Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Georgia, Texas, the Carolinas, many others. And what we're looking for are fast foreclosing, foreclosing, foreclosing states. Okay, so uh, we stay away from places like New York and New Jersey, where the foreclosure process is very lengthy. Uh, we want to be able to foreclose in within one year, and I'll explain more about that and what that looks like. So what 49th Parallel Properties is not, is we're not a wholesaler. Uh, I've definitely wholesaled a lot of real estate before, but we are not looking to wholesale notes. Uh, we're looking to buy mortgage notes for our own portfolio, uh, not flip them off to other investors. Uh, we're also not fix and flippers anymore. Uh, I have done my share of fix and flip deals, but when we buy notes, our goal isn't to just foreclose and then fix and flip the property. Um, there's just too many moving pieces and I want to keep my business simple. And we find that we, we can make a lot of money uh, with less risk and less moving parts by not fixing and flipping. And we're not landlords. That's one of the reasons I love to be the banker is uh, we don't have to deal with tenants and toilets and all the fun, fun things that go with being a landlord. And lastly, uh, we're not what my friend Scott Carson calls a joker broker. So we're not out there trying to broker pools of notes. Uh, to other buyers. We're, like I said, buying for our own portfolio first. Okay. And what I like doing, why I love this business is we're able to turn problem properties into profitable solutions. And that goes with uh, buying properties themselves, but also more recently with the notes is we're actually turning problem notes that the banks don't want. And we're able to reach out to the borrower and figure out a solution that's going to work for them and hopefully allow them to stay in their house without uh, having to leave or go through a foreclosure. So we like to create a win for the bank who's trying to sell off that, that unperforming or non-performing note, uh, a win for the, the borrower who's obviously in some sort of distress if they're not making their payments, a win for our investor. And a lot of times we use investors who uh, lend from their self-directed IRA and, and other uh, savings to help us buy these notes. And then a win for us as well. And I learned this very on in real estate that it takes a team. Uh, real estate is a team sport. If you're trying to do everything yourself, you're not going to get very far. And I also believe in using the expertise of professionals uh, and offloading a lot of the, the jobs and responsibilities that maybe I'm just not skilled at or I don't want to do um, and, so, and leveraging their skills. So one of the main companies that we love is Madison Management Services out of New Jersey. And this is a loan servicing company. So whenever we, we buy a mortgage note, we immediately employ a company like Madison to service the note. And what they do is they uh, reach out to the borrower. They're the ones that collect the payments from the borrower. They issue monthly statements to our, ourselves as the lender and the borrower. And they basically do all the bookkeeping and accounting and the day-to-day -day, uh, maintenance of the mortgage notes. Um, as part of our due diligence process, before we buy any note, we always get a full title search done on the property. And we use Pro Title USA for that. And mainly why we do that is we just wanna make sure we know what we're buying and we wanna make sure that the asset, so the house that's securing that note 
there's no issues on title that could uh, haunt us later on. So we're looking for making sure there's no other mortgages that could get in our way, or maybe IRS liens, uh, a, a break in the chain of title, things like that. Uh, we also like to work with Singer Law Group out of California. Um, we don't use them on every deal, but whenever we have a problem borrower uh, that's causing us some headaches, um, we send in Singer to, to help us out. Um, nothing gets someone listening and paying attention more than getting a call from an attorney. And they also handle a lot of our foreclosures for us. And in fact, Daniel Singer has done over 60,000 foreclosures uh, in his career. So they, they definitely know what they're doing. And no matter what, when we do end up foreclosing, we always use a uh, attorney, a foreclosure attorney that is well versed in that state. So they know exactly um, how to go through the foreclosure process in the state where the note and property are located. And then lastly, well, not lastly, but uh, another key player here is Ross Diversified Insurance. So we always want to make sure that we have insurance on the asset. Uh, we never want to have a situation where the collateral, so the house burns down, you know, a week after we buy the note and, and find that it's not insured. So um, Roth Diversified Insurance, they really understand the note business. And so uh, they're able to put uh, force place insurance on all of our notes to make sure that we're protected as well as our investors. As far as entity structuring, we use Scott Royal Smith at Royal Legal Solutions. Um, he's been a podcast guest on Bigger Pockets, and he works with real estate investors nationwide to help them set up the appropriate legal structure, whether that's LLCs or partnerships or whatever's needed, um, to help minimize both taxes paid and uh, asset protection. And then at the very last, we use Pinnacle Accounting, uh, Chris Barillo, and he's in Calgary, and uh, they specialize in cross-border accounting. So they work with businesses uh, that do deals and, and do business on both sides of the border, both in Canada and the U.S. And this is particularly important for, for me because I am a Canadian, but also we do work with a lot of uh, private lenders and investors out of Canada. And we want to make sure that they have the appropriate structure set up and, and accounting so that they're paying the least amount of taxes on both sides of the border and have the appropriate entity structure. So they work hand in hand with Royal Legal Solutions. So let's talk a little bit about our deal focus. What are we actually looking at buying and uh, what's our ideal note? So as I mentioned, we are looking at home values that are as is values of 50 to 250K. The mortgage note's probably gonna be a lot less than that because we're buying it at a steep discount. So as I mentioned, we're usually buying somewhere between 40% uh, and 60% of the note value. We're avoiding long foreclosure markets like New York and New Jersey, as well as uh, very expensive real estate markets like California, uh, Washington, Oregon, basically the West Coast. Although if we did find a deal in those that made sense, we would, we would jump on it. We're looking for owner-occupied assets with a payment history. So we're looking for um, mortgages where the homeowner has showed signs that they are making payments. They're trying to get their mortgage back on track. You know, maybe they're making a payment here and there and at least just showing effort. And we feel that we can work with those homeowners and negotiate with them once we buy the note and see if we can solve their problem to get them paying on a regular basis. And when we do that, it's called a re-performing note if we can get them paying for 12 months straight. Um, and we are able to, after that, do a loan modification for them. And a lot of times it's just something like, for example, COVID. I mean, there's so many people that got laid off or had issues, uh, you know, if they're self-employed, their earnings went way down because of lockdowns and that kind of thing. So they had trouble paying their mortgage and now they're in a big hole that they can't get out of, but they are working again now that things have, uh, you know, gone back to normal. So we can work with that borrower and maybe uh, put the amount that they're owed in back payments and arrears, we can put that on the end of the mortgage, or maybe even just forgive that altogether uh, if we can just get them paying again on a regular basis on their mortgage. And that's about 50% of the uh, notes that we buy. We're able to do that. And that's our cash flow business model. We get that borrower paying again on a monthly basis. And that's where we're getting, you know, month to month reliable cash flow coming in every single month. Um, the other 25%, uh, we do what's called a cash for keys. And this is a situation where we're able to talk with the borrower 
and we find out that they're just not going to be able to make payments. Maybe they've lost their job completely and they're not back. Uh, they don't have full employment or maybe they're at a new job, but they're making far less than they were. And there's just no chance that they're going to get that uh, note performing again. We can offer them cash for keys and allow them to escape a foreclosure uh, because that's very damaging to their credit. Um, it'll impact them on their credit score for seven years and make life pretty tough for them. So we can give them money to move out and maybe put uh, money on a damage deposit for a place to rent in exchange for them deeding the house to us as their lender. And so that's a cash for keys model. That's about a quarter of the time. And then the other quarter of the time it could be a situation where we're just, the uh, borrower was non-responsive. They're not answering our calls and letters. Um, sometimes, it, especially with vacant houses, if we do buy notes with vacant that are not owner occupied, uh, and we can't reach out to that borrower, then we end up just going into foreclosure, hiring our foreclosure attorney and ha having them take care of that process. And that's a quarter of the time. And either way, when we either foreclose or do the cash for keys, uh, we try to resell the asset in as is condition, and we like to sell it at a discount. So that makes it enticing for a new buyer to come and buy it as quickly as possible. So we price the asset uh, a bit below what the market value is to, in order to have a quick sale. And as I mentioned, we're not fix and flippers. So uh, we're not looking at rehabbing these properties when we uh, do the cash for keys and take the property back. Um, we may do a, you know, a little clean out just to make it a little bit more desirable to a new buyer, but we're not into doing heavy rehabs. Okay, let's go through a few examples of each of those exit strategies that I just discussed. Here's a, a deal that we're actually working on right now. Uh, I've made my offer on this property and, and I'm just waiting for the bank to get back to me to see if, if we won the bidding. Um, but this is a house in Urbana, Ohio, which is right smack in the middle of Columbus and Dayton. And this particular property, the loan amount that's owed on the note is $132,000. And the borrower is four months behind on their payments. So the lender's wanting to sell off this, this loan at a, as a non-performing mortgage note. And the value of the property in as-is condition is $155,000. And so my offer was 55% of the loan balance. So my offer was $72,750 um, on the $132,000 loan, okay? And so my plan here um, is if we can get the borrower to pay again, it is owner occupied. If we can get the borrower back on track again, um, we can get a cash flow of $663 a month. And typically what I like to do when I'm, uh, getting the borrower back on track and doing a, a modification is to have them come come to the table with a little bit of skin in the game. And we try to get three to four months of payments up front just to show that the borrower is serious. They want to stay in their home and start making payments again. And if we're able to do that in this situation, then we're going to be looking at about a 14% cash on cash return in the first year, which is great. So this is a perfect example of, of a cash flow strategy that we like. And, and this is our main goal. This is the type of deal we want to do most. Okay, so here's an example of a deal we did a while back, uh, a cash for keys example. And it's also called a deed in lieu of foreclosure. So often... When we do the cash for keys, we get the seller to sign a deed in lieu of foreclosure to us as the, the bank or the lender. And, and it's basically saying they're giving us the property instead of foreclosure. Okay. This one's in Cape Coral, Florida. Uh, this is an interesting situation where we bought this from a hedge fund. And I'm not sure if they just recently acquired this note as, along with a bunch of others and, and their team just hadn't dug into the collateral file. Uh, but when we were reviewing the collateral file uh, as part of our due diligence, we found that there was a signed deed in lieu of foreclosure on the very top of the collateral file. So what that means is the cash for keys had already been done <laughs> for us. And the uh, owner slash borrower had uh, deeded the property over to the lender. And they didn't even know about it, I guess. And so we bought that property, or sorry, we bought that note. Um, let me see what were the numbers here. So. The unpaid balance on the note was 143,750, and they were also three years in arrears. We were able to buy that note for $55,000, okay? And the home value was 110,000. And because we already had the deed in lieu signed, we didn't have to come and, and pay the borrower any cash as part of that cash for keys, because it was already done. So that saved us some money. And we were able to sell this property for full price in 60 days, 
and we made a $44,000 profit on it. And the only reason it took 60 days is because uh, we were having a little bit of issues with the servicing company that was currently uh, working on this property before we bought it. So it could have been even faster, but 60 days is pretty quick to get a full price offer. So we were very happy. Um, and here's an example of the third exit strategy, which is the foreclosure. Um, this is a two bed, two bath uh, townhome in Palm City, Florida. And uh, we bought this again from a hedge fund. The balance on the mortgage note that we bought was 156,000 plus they were two years behind in their payments. And so we were able again to buy this one at 55,000 and plus the, the cost that we paid the attorney to foreclose, which is about 5,000. And this property, when we bought it in as its condition, it was $100,000. That's what it was worth. And so we sold it at the foreclosure auction. We had our attorney go ahead and foreclose. Um, the owners were not in the property and we, are, we weren't really able to, to reach them. So we foreclosed on this property in 18 months and we sold it for 95,000 and made a 40K profit on it. So our, uh, our private lender who helped us do this deal out of their IRA, uh, they made a, a nice above average return on their money. Uh, we made a nice return and uh, it, was a, it took a little bit longer on this one to foreclose. Usually we like to foreclose in under a year, but uh, we still made a fantastic return. And our, our investor was happy. The bank got rid of the, the property that they were gonna have to foreclose on and everyone won at the end. So it was great. And then oftentimes we will look at buying actual portfolios or pools of notes from asset managers. And the reason for this is some asset managers, they will only consider an offer to buy all of the notes that they're selling in one chunk. Okay, so that's sometimes they won't sell one offs. Um, and that's a problem if you don't have the, the funds to be able to buy the entire batch of notes or pool of notes. Um, but the other time is you can buy the entire pool of notes and get cheaper discounts or bigger discounts on the notes if you buy all of them instead of maybe one or two from the lender. So they'll give you a steeper discount, which is great. And so that's one of the reasons why we look for private investors to come on and join us on these deals as private lenders, um, because it allows us to be able to take down these uh, larger pools of notes. And here's just an example of one, what one, one, uh, one that we looked at recently, what it would look like, some of the properties in that pool. <clears throat> so in our business, there's six important key things that we are looking at. Number one, our goal is to rehab the borrower. So I like the loan modification plan as our number one goal when we're looking at notes. Um, I want to look for owner-occupied assets where the borrower has shown some sort of um, you know, initiative to make payments in the last year. Okay, Maybe they're not making consistent payments, but we want to see situations where they've made at least a couple uh, payments and showing effort that they want to get back on track because those are the kinds of people that we can work with. Uh, we can do a, a loan modification with them so that we can get that note paying again. And then we're going to get that reliable monthly cash flow month after month. We're only buying first lien mortgage notes. We're not buying seconds or thirds. And we are only buying below market value. So our goal is always to be making a note offer where the note purchase price is 70% of the property value or less. Okay. And that's just to protect us and our investors. Uh, we want to make sure that there's always enough equity there. So if we did have to sell off the asset, um, after foreclosing or doing a cash for keys that no matter what, even if we have to sell it at a discount, we're always going to come out on top and, and profit from the deal. We always rely on our third party vendors to review the files and the title work. Okay. So we always want to make sure that there's a third set of eyes on these deals. And then we also rely on them to handle all of our node servicing and our foreclosures. And then we have forced place insurance on all of the assets that we buy. We never want to risk uh, not being insured on these assets just in case you know things happen floods and fires and that kind of thing happen all the time so what are we looking for well we are always on the lookout for potential funding partners um, because we are investing for the long-term cash flow that's my favorite type of deal that means that sometimes we've got our cash tied up in these deals and we're in order to scale and, and grow we're looking for funding partners to continue to buy more notes um, we also, as I mentioned, are looking to be able to buy more large pools of notes, which requires more capital. Um, and we want to be able to do that so that we can get even better deals on these notes because the lenders will, will sell them off at a cheaper price, 
if you're buying packages of notes. And so we're looking for real estate investors who are looking for above average returns on their money. Um, there are so many people, I think the last uh, statistic I heard was that 33% of all people that have um, IRAs, retirement accounts, have their money just sitting there doing nothing, not invested in anything. So if you have cash savings, a 401k or a self-directed IRA, um, you're a prime candidate. We'd, we'd have to discuss your situation to make sure, but um, we like to work with Quest Trust Company. So if you have a non-self-directed IRA, it can definitely help you work through getting it self-directed. And what that means is it allows you to invest in anything you want through your IRA. Um, when it's non-self-directed, a lot of times you're limited, limited to what you can invest in, but when it's self-directed, you can invest in anything. And I actually heard uh, Derek Long from Quest Trust Company out of Houston in one of his presentations, he said the weirdest thing that their clients invested in was one of them invested in um, race horse semen. So I guess they knew a lot about horse racing and they were able to use their IRA to somehow invest in race horse semen. So there you go. Um, you can invest in anything through your self-directed IRA. Also, if you are uh, a real estate investor that maybe you're not getting the types of returns you're wanting through your current strategy, whether you're a landlord that's tired of tenants, toilets, and trash, you want to still be able to get that monthly cash flow that you were getting from your rents, uh, maybe in a less, uh, <laughs> few less headaches by being a lender, uh, we can work with you on that. Um, also, REO investors who are going to those monthly auctions trying to buy the foreclosure properties, maybe you've noticed that it's really hard to find deals these days. I know that I have, and that's one of the reasons why I switched uh, from buying at the auctions a few years back. So if you're looking for maybe a, a different way of getting deals and, and generating income through real estate, that's a good option for you. And the same with flippers. Um, with the, the shortages and supply chain issues that we've had, I know lumber was crazy priced in the last few years and it's still pretty high. So I know a lot of house flippers are either having trouble finding deals or also having trouble getting the margins correct so that they can actually make a profit uh, from doing fix and flips. So if you're sick and tired of, of flipping, let's talk because we might be able to get you into something that's a little less stress where the, the numbers still make sense for you. And just overall, people looking to put their certificate of disappointment and their IRAs to work. Also, yes, I do work with Canadians, as I mentioned. Uh, a lot of the investors I've worked with in the past have been Canadians who just want to be investing in U.S. real estate. Um, there's a lot, we're a lot freer in the U.S. to do a lot of different strategies that you can't do in Canada. And that's one of the reasons that I've been committed my whole career to investing in U.S. real estate. Um, I hardly even know the Canadian real estate market. I don't, I don't pay attention to it at all. I'm fully uh, invested <laughs> mentally, physically, and financially in U.S. real estate. Okay, so if any of this sparked your interest, let's continue this discussion. I'd love to hear what your investment goals are, your expectations. Um, you, you probably have questions about this strategy because buying notes is not the most common. Um, there's not a whole bunch of note buying shows on HDTV. So let's get together. Uh, I can explain the process in, in greater detail, get your questions answered, show you some of the opportunities we have right now that you might be able to invest in and just see if you're a fit for this type of investment and, and this type of deal. So what I recommend is let's just have a 30 minute conversation, probably over Zoom, uh, unless you're in Calgary here, we can do it in person, but Zoom's the best way to do it. That way we can at least talk face to face and uh, let's, let's just move this along and see if there's a way that we can, can do business together. So here's a couple of ways that you can contact me. Um, here's my link. You can click this link and this will take you to my calendar page and you can just book a, a 30 minutes time slot that works for you. Or if it's easier, you can just email me at cal at calewing.com. Um, here's my US and Canadian phone numbers. So feel free to call me. And as always, you can visit my website at calewing.com. Um, this video will be posted there as well as some other videos and, and information on how you can work with me. So feel free to visit that website as well to get a little bit more information about me. So with that, I thank you for your time and interest, and I look forward to meeting you in person to discuss this further. Take care.